Today is all about making 3D models look beautiful. We see a lot of people struggling with making 3D stuff look good in HitFilm, so I'm going to share some tips for a very basic lighting setup that will get you good results. So the first thing to note is that we are using a good model, and a lot of the free models online simply aren't that great. So if you're using models that you downloaded, you want to make sure that you really hunt down the good stuff, or go to somewhere like TurboSquid and actually pay for the privilege. We put some links in the description to get you started. But a model being good doesn't mean it has to be super crazy detailed. Check out this untextured version. You can see that it's really pretty simple in its geometry, and that's why it performs really nicely in hit film and anything else you throw it into. The appearance of detail comes in efficient use of textures. In this case, we've got a really simple setup with just one material slot because essentially this spaceship is just a big lump of metal. Let's run through what I've done in here because setting up materials is the first essential step to making a model look good. I've got three different textures. The diffuse texture sets up the main surface colouring. This model has lots of lovely detail built into its main texture. Then there's the specular map, which restricts highlights when we shine lights on it. So check out this version without a specular map, whereby the entire ship is uniformly super shiny all over the place, with this version, where the dirty patches are less bright because they've been restricted by that specular map. Then there's the bump map, which adds the impression of additional surface detail without needing actual geometry. Again, check out this version without a bump map, where all the surfaces look really flat, and then this version, where there's lots of interesting panels and glinting edges. You'll note that I've set up my material colours to be a mid-grey. The only exception is the emissive colour, because I don't want the ship to be self-illuminated like something out of Tron. Ok, check out the illumination model. This determines how light interacts with the surface. I'm using something called Cook Torrents, which works best for metals. The two settings you really want to take some time over are the Roughness and the Specular Reflectance settings. Specular Reflectance is basically the intensity of the shine on the surface. The Roughness is the really interesting one. If you have it way down low, you're basically saying, this is a really highly polished, shiny thing. In that case, light hits the surface and just bounces straight back with a very defined specular highlight. As you increase the roughness, the surface becomes less shiny and light is dispersed and scattered across the surface. So a key part to lighting 3D models realistically is actually just to pay attention to real life. So as you're watching this video, have a look at your monitor or your tablet, and look at how the screen reflects light. Take a look at your desk or your keyboard. All the different materials reflect light in completely different ways, and you have to replicate that when you're setting up your materials in hit film. Ok, so here we have our unlit model. Thanks to the textures, it actually already looks kind of cool, but the lighting is very flat. So, let's make it pretty. First up, we're going to go into the model's materials section. You almost always want to turn on cast shadows, otherwise none of your lights are going to create shadows from the model. You also want to activate both the ambient occlusion options, which create subtle shading around points of intersection, basically areas where light can't quite reach. And from the new layer menu, I shall let there be light. And immediately, this looks kind of cool, more dramatic for starters, but the interaction between the light and the metallic surface now looks much more convincing than the unlit version. So lights default to being point lights, and they enter the scene slightly above the centre, if I click and drag on the position value here, I can bring it down into view. Let's also turn cast shadows on for this light. Remember that for any light that can cast shadows, you have to turn it on manually. I'm also actually going to increase the opacity of the shadow up to 100%. I'm actually going to follow a traditional three-point lighting setup for this tutorial. And here's the thing, if it works well enough for real life, it'll probably look pretty good in 3D as well. So if you're not familiar with a three-point lighting setup, let's just cover the basics. Here's where you have your subject, and then you position what's called a key light somewhere maybe around here. And then we put a fill light over here and a backlight here. The key light is so-called because it's the main source of light. The fill is then there to stop everything else falling into total shadow, and the backlight is there to provide some visual interest and help your subject pop out. That point light that I added, I'm now going to move. I'm going to shift him over to the left, then move him to the front of the ship and put him up a bit. You can jump out into a multi-view if that makes it easier to position your lights, it's really up to you. Point lights spray light out in all directions. 
It's a bit like having an exposed light bulb in the scene. You'll probably find yourself using them a lot. I'm going to rename this one on the timeline to Key, just so we can keep track of our layers. OK, so an issue we have now is that everywhere not lit by our point light is totally 100% black. This is something I see a lot when people are compositing into live action for the first time, where the lights result in these really dark black areas. However, take a look around you again. It's pretty rare for something to fall away into total darkness, especially if it's set during the daytime. Even objects which aren't under direct lighting are still lit by bounced light from their surroundings. There's a bunch of ways to deal with this, but in this video I'm going to use the most simple approach. I'm going to add another light, and this one I will change to being an ambient light. And suddenly we have a very brightly lit ship. Note how ambient lights don't have any position properties at all. That's because they don't exist physically in 3D space. Instead, they illuminate everything equally from all sides. This means they're completely unrealistic, but it also makes them super useful. You can do things with them that you actually can't do in real life. However, you won't usually be using ambient lights at full intensity, because as you can see here, they completely flatten out the scene again. Now check it out as I drop the intensity of the ambient light. By the time we get down to zero, we're just left with our key light again. Because this is our fill light, we're using it to fill in those dark patches. An intensity of about 25 is going to work well for me. This obviously will require adjusting depending on your shot. I'm going to rename that light on the timeline to Ambient. Note how those lights are now mixing together. This is really the secret to both real on-set lighting and lighting in a 3D virtual space. It's pretty rare that you'll only use a single light to get what you want. Right, this is looking OK, but it's a bit boring. Let's add some style in the form of a backlight. I'll add another light, and this one I'm going to change to being blue. Hit film blue, in fact. I'm just going to use the colour picker to grab it from the top of one of these panels. And immediately that looks pretty nice. See how the ship now has this blue sheen on top? Where you put this light will vary its effect massively. I'm going to put it generally towards the back of the shot, and if I put it up high, it has a more diffused impact whereas down low it creates sharper, bright highlights. This is all influenced by how you've set up your materials. And that's our three-point setup, and it looks pretty good, despite not actually being that much effort to set up. I'm going to add one more light though, another point light in fact, and this one I'm going to change to being bright red. I'm going to bring this to the front, near the cockpit. I'm going to turn on linear falloff for this light, and adjust the reach so that it's only just affecting this part of the ship. You can use fall off to your advantage. Lights in real life all have fall off built in, and in hit film this can be used to localize the influence of your lights. In fact, this is when you can start to paint with light. In the case of this red light, I want it to remain in that same position relative to the ship, no matter what I do with the spaceship. So I'm going to parent it to the ship model down on the timeline. That way, if I move the ship around or rotate it, that red light's going to stay in its relative position. By following this very basic lighting setup, you'll get 3D models that look good pretty much every time. Now, of course, every project and every shot does require its own custom lighting arrangement, and you have to be led by the needs and the tone of your story. But this setup gives you a good starting point. OK, so we now have a ship with far more visual interest than we started with. Let's take a look at this in an actual shot. The lighting setup here is almost identical to what we've been talking about, the only difference being that I've changed the blue backlight to a kind of burnt orange to match the sun in the scene, and I've switched the key light from a point to a directional light. Directional lights are good for far off and super massive light sources like suns, because they emit light rays in parallel along a specific trajectory. This is kind of like how the sun's rays end up reaching Earth, compared with something like a smaller, more localised light bulb in a room. If you take this version to be quite a painterly, expressive lighting setup, where it's more about mood than realism, let's also take a quick look at this version, which takes a starker, more realistic approach. Something like you'd see in Apollo 13 or Gravity, I guess. In this case, I've removed the coloured lights, reduced the fill to create a darker silhouette, and I've actually duplicated the key light to make it even more intense. This has all been about setting up your 3D lights, but getting beautiful lighting is also about working with post-processing effects on top of your 3D scene. For example, here's the shot without any post-processing. It's the exact same lighting setup, but it looks very different and considerably more computer-generated. 
Let's take a look at this specific frame. So I've got two grade layers added on top of the 3D scene for its entire duration. The first one has anamorphic lens flare added to create blooming around bright areas, as tends to happen when shooting through a real camera lens. On top of this is a very subtle lens dirt effect, which again introduces an unpredictable element of reality. This is all about something called verisimilitude, which is the appearance of being true or real. The pursuit of verisimilitude is inherent in all filmmaking, but especially in visual effects, which starts off as being completely unreal. Typical viewers don't consciously know that light tends to bloom out around bright patches, but they've watched enough movies to recognise when something is missing. Remember that it's about the appearance of being true. We're evoking the feel of reality, not simulating it. We're not NASA. Finally, for this shot, I've added a LUT to simulate a Kodak film stock. The result of this creates a higher contrast shot with intense colours, and it really brings out the blues and reds in the ship's material. To my eye, this makes the ship look more real, and perhaps even more like a miniature shot on film, rather than a perfect CG creation. How you grade your own shot will depend entirely on the specifics of your project, of course. Okay, well, many thanks for watching. My name's Simon Jones, and I'll see you on the next video. We've got more videos on lighting coming up, so hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out. It might save your life.